What's going on, everybody? It's Shadowdash back after the game, coming at you with another Summoner's War video. And in today's video, I wanted to talk about my top five list of RTA monsters that completely shocked the meta when it comes to season 21 here. Now, I will say this, uh, even though uh, you know I'm making a claim on top five, I want to say that this is my top five. This may not be necessarily your top five, but honestly, guys, I think we're going to be really close as far as our our picks for this one. Because uh, for those that don't know, last season, season number 20, I was able to get myself. Uh, a G1 rank, but unfortunately, uh, I did not get that this one. I got C2 this time around. Ultimately, I think it led to just the overall amount of wings that I did, the overall amount of effort that I put in. My tryhard cat was not on, but I will tell you this. I had a couple of units in this meta this time around that absolutely shocked me when it comes to their draft, uh, when they got put in, and uh, they just basically, they, they wrecked me. <laughs> There's no other way to put it out there. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about those kind of five, uh, those five RTA units and just kind of get uh, just kind of get it out there as to why they shocked me. And again, if you guys have any comments on your top five units that just went out of the way to just trump you uh, in the RTA arena, leave a comment in the comment section down below. As always, I'm looking forward to hearing your feedback on that, okay? Um, so first one that we're going to talk about needs no introduction. One of the units that recently got uh, nerfed, <laughs> buffed, and nerfed at the same time, the Wind Weapon Master, right? So the Wind Weapon Master, with the recent change on that passive, uh, being able to have that additional damage uh, on the attack here, it was up to upwards of 300% attack power and uh, went down to the 200% attack power here. So as you guys know, when this unit came out, it was absolutely disgusting to the point where like, you didn't even need to skill up. You just slapped some runes on it and <laughs> it did some nasty work. You set it on a violent set and it did some nasty work. Now, you guys might've been like, well, of course, Childish, this one kind of shocked the meta, right? It was outrageously broken and then it got nerfed and whatnot, you know? So my personal opinion, when it got nerfed, I, I didn't think it was gonna be still just a, a big, big unit in the meta. But the funny thing about it is, is that, you know, in addition to the uh, team that I was using last season, I also incorporated a Molong Nana X kind of composition that uh, I could take advantage of as I pulled Nana uh, this last year, right? This last season. So, you know, one of the things that I kind of didn't even realize that other people were doing to me, were getting the best of me, was utilizing Dominic in uh, a line above units like Molong, units like Bulwark, units like Daphnis, um, you know, units that have the potential to assist Molong or assist Daphnis and like sniping a unit, especially a unit like this that is going to get true value out of its damage that it can do. Um, regardless of what the element is, um, this was a fantastic unit uh, to go up against. Obviously, a fantastic unit to, to, to utilize if you do have it here. But uh, without question, even though it did get nerfed, uh, I still feel like um, it definitely shocked the meta. And uh, it's it just it, like I said, without question, I, I think it's good. I think it's here to stay. I don't think it's going to change anywhere now. Uh, the next one that I want to hit up here is also going to be in the wing category. Um, this one here, um, to my surprise. Um, Really, it really caught me off guard. I want to, I want to give some love to the Wind Bison here, aka Segar. I'm gonna go with Segar because I know a lot of you guys probably don't, uh, don't have the Wind Bison here. But uh, with the Segar, right? The Wind Bison, uh, a crazy strong unit uh, that essentially has the opportunity, uh, depending on how you build it, to essentially lock down a specific unit on the opponent team, and then if the other, if the other opponents don't have any kind of uh, uh, immunity, or maybe you have a unit that enables this one, like a stripper prior to do, it, it just completely shuts them down by providing, you know, the reset on the main unit alongside the strip, as well as the attack bar reduction and the uh, provoke. So funny enough, you would think that the, um, it wouldn't be as crazy because we have units in the game that, you know, uh, like, like a Ganymede one here that resets the main unit and reduces the attack bar, but the provoking is actually really, really important here because again, those other units out there, they are not, uh, they are not, you know, able to be reset here. So, um, you know, for whatever reason, let's say the, you know, protect bar, attack bar reduction doesn't get locked, you know, doesn't get locked down, they resist, that provoking still disables them from essentially utilizing a skill that potentially can, you know, cleanse the team, get them back to square one, or essentially just get them back, just get them back on the right track here. So uh, really, really good unit here overall. Um, saw a lot of people go up against me with a extremely fast cigar. I mean, and despite the fact that it has a lower base speed than most, um, I saw people, like I said, invest some of their fastest sets on this unit. And uh, without question, it, it definitely caught me off guard. Uh, I feel like I definitely shocked them out. I feel like this is one of the units out there. I mean, that's getting, that's increasing the uh, win rate uh, for people out there, uh, considering their lineup and what they use, of course. But again, really, really good unit. Love it. If you, have, if you didn't get a chance to mess around with it, um, I encourage you to do so, right? I encourage you to do so. Now this one here, uh, this one, again, this is not in any order and most people will make the argument. This is probably 
like the number one unit that shocked the meta because this literally went from zero to hero being uh, essentially what I would consider a, a, a controversial first pick, uh, a contested first pick here uh, for a lot of people out there, especially in the upper guardian ranges. Masha, fantastic unit. A um, lot of people out there that, you know, love this unit before, before the uh, changes, but with the recent change, uh, being able to get that passive immunity when you do an attack on your first turn. And then, of course, the uh, speed boost when the enemy uh, gets, uh, you know, the ally, ally attack bar decreases uh, up to five times is really, really good. Now, the, f the funny thing of it is, is, when I look at this unit, I really didn't think it was going to be all too good. So I kind of pushed Masha to the side. I already had a nice violence on her, but I didn't go out of my way to build her. Um, because I was kind of thinking along the lines of last year where like, yes, uh, Masha was pretty darn good unit, but you know, at the, in the previous time around, she was kind of in a position to where she needed, you know, another attack bar increasing unit to kind of really make her shine. Like, yes, she had the ability to absorb the attack bar and get a little bit of value on this one. But again, she was still kind of locked down, uh, by, you know, combining it with the unit that they could really, really make her shine. Obviously along the likes of like a vertical per se, a Charlotte per se. Um, a really, a really strong unit like that. But, you know, this time around, I feel like she's a little bit more self-efficient. And again, she's just going to be uh, a pain in the butt to deal with uh, on, you know, units that everybody takes advantage of, right? The Oliver, the CP, the Cigar. Um, there's just so many units out there um, that she essentially counters. Uh, so again, uh, if you have this unit uh, and maybe you haven't messed around with it, I highly encourage you to, you know, definitely build it, take advantage of it, because uh, this one here, like I said, I think it's going to be here to stay. Uh, I don't think it's going to be going anywhere, considering the the concept of of cleaving, reducing attack bar, you know, all the attack bar manipulation, especially on the negative end. Um, I don't think this one's going to be going anywhere, and I think this one's this one's also going to be here to stay. It it definitely shocked me when I went up against it, and uh, if you guys didn't get a chance to mess around with it, uh, you I think you'd definitely see it a little bit more uh, in the meta here. Uh, now moving on into the water category for my fourth and uh, fifth picks here. I think I want to start out with, oh, let's see. Actually, I'm trying to think here. Is that fourth? I think it was fourth here. Yeah. So fourth pick, uh, that I got going on here is going to be Shizuka. So Shizuka, um, again, another unit that got recently changed in the meta. And this one here, again, doesn't, shouldn't really come to no surprises to people that, you know, yeah, of course it could have shocked the meta because of the, the buff that it recently got having the beneficial effects go up to two turns from one turn is absolutely, you know, pretty good. But the crazy thing about this unit is that I, I didn't really, and it's kind of embarrassing to say, but I didn't really consider how how strong of a unit this is oh, when when you're a person like me going up against a double cleave, right? So for those who don't know, I generally, I, I run a Swift Vertihay comp, Vertihay uh, Hill comp with, you know, basically triple strips. Um, but, you know, down the road, I started to try to get a little bit of aggressive going from a uh, triple strip to a double strip and then banning one of their immunity so that I can just essentially deal with one, you know, unit um, that has some kind of, uh, you know, immunity and whatnot here. And then essentially just try to use my overall damage, my overall attack bar manipulation to kind of control the playing field. It was very, very risky. Shouldn't have really done it that way because if they resist, right, I'm basically at a loss for words, right? I couldn't really do anything. But the funny thing of it is these people were picking double immunity plus Shizuka uh, and definitely and utilizing my harmful effects to take advantage of the people, you know, in turn two, turn three, so on and so forth here. Because again, guys, even if I ban, you know, an immunity on their end, they essentially have three immunity because Shizuka can duplicate what your, you know, other units are bringing when it comes to immunity, right? I mean, it's, it literally turns into a second Wusa when you have a Wusa in there. So if you guys are one of those people that have Shizuka and kind of put her to the side, didn't really take full advantage of her, I, I encourage you to, you know, take her out of the mix and uh, incorporate it because I mean, considering how good she is with the extended beneficial effects and the resetting ability uh, or the, uh, the uh, reduction ability here, the cooldown reduction. I mean, this is without question uh, a top tier unit now. And, and it's just going to be, I just can't imagine this one not being in the meta for a very long time, considering all the things that it does into it here. It kind of reminds me of like a new school pro in the sense that it does so much. If you think about it, right? So, we got a single target strip. We got the cooldown reduction. We got the heal. We got the reviving ability. We got the beneficial effects alongside every single kind of harmful effect you could bring. Like this unit here literally does it all and has a fantastic leader skill uh, to go alongside with this. So again, um, this one here, without question, top five units out there that completely shocked the meta. 
and really, like I said, really ruined my luck of um, ruined my chances of trying to uh, get myself, you know, a potential guardian spot this year. Now, last but not least, technically, I would I'd probably have to give this to two units because because they kind of bring in the same thing. But there was definitely one more so than the other that I got the job done. And I'm going to give it to um, a unit that I know you guys are going to be like, really? But I, I, it'll make sense, right? Once we get into it. So the unit is a unit that is free to play um, that all of you can obtain. And I'm sure now when you look at this list of, you know, monsters that we have in front of you, you see free to play, you guys already know what I'm talking about here. So. I got to give some love. Once again, this is my top five list of units that kind of shocked the meta. Uh, not just for myself, but for other people that I saw out there, um, you know, dealing with it uh, was in fact to Sarian. I know you guys are like, are you kidding me right now? Come on, child. This is not really good. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Okay. When it comes to the top 10 meta use of the game, we can argue back and forth about who fits in the top 10. But one of the things that we can argue and, and can agree on is that a lot of the units that are currently in the top 10 right now do have some kind of passive that can be silenced by the likes of an Oblivion here. So again, units like uh, Tassarian, units like Kearney, um definitely have a little bit more value uh, this time around here. And I would be crazy to think that they're not going to be involved in some way, shape or form in the next season because of the fact of uh, all the units that are currently in the meta right now. So um, this this time around, though, I want to give some love to Tassarian because uh, Tassarian to me um, is just such an overall fantastic unit uh that just like i feel like some people you know know that the sorry is good but almost forget about that like really get a, forget about the fact of you know the value and how, how much it brings that it makes it right we, we know about the oblivion we know about the defense break but the the ancient power passive is i know that there's going to be one or two people out there that really did not take a look at this passive and realize how strong it is um so i'm just going to go ahead and you know you know bring it to you bring it home for you here decreases the damage dealt from enemies with no harmful effects by 30 percent, and then increases the damage uh inflict on enemies with harmful effects by 30 percent right so this you know this unit here has that ability to do additional damage has its own way of mitigating some damage um and again uh, when you think about you know the artifacts that can come in play to this being able to reduce damage from specific elements or whatnot here this unit has the ability to do what it needs to do and stay alive while doing it so if you're one of those people out there that really haven't had, uh, you know, really haven't messed around with this, not just for RTA, but for Guild Wars, for Siege of Water here, this is an outstanding unit, a unit that everyone should have built with really, really good runes because I, I feel like it gets up there um, considering there's only a handful of units, especially free-to-play units, um, that you can take advantage of this Oblivion. Now, I ain't going to lie, Compto, so I would love to see, we got Herney, we got Tassarna, but I'd love to see another win unit out there that can take advantage of Oblivion. I'd like to see a little bit more options for this one because I think we are a little bit limited unless you got uh, some LD5 toys, right? Um, so uh, hopefully down the road, we could see we could see a little bit more of this here and uh, you know, take advantage of it. Um, in addition to that, it does have that resistance leader skill, which of course uh, is absolutely strong. If you're players, if you're a person like me that cannot cap out your resistance uh, with your rune quality, uh, with your substats and whatnot here. So um, again, guys, I know it's gonna shock you, but remember, just hear me out. This is my personal top five list that shocked the meta when it comes to the matches I did, the matches I saw, the matches that surprised other people. I mean, this is just this is just a collective, small collective amount of data here. Um, feel free to argue with me and debate on this down the road, but I'm pretty sure there's a couple of other units out there in the list um, that you would uh, make the argument for. Leave it in the comment section down below. I would love to hear uh, your feedback on that. And, and so hopefully, uh, hopefully, I don't I don't want to spoil it. I'm not going to spoil it here. Hopefully, you guys got a chance to check out the. Um, the Legends tournament that just went down less than uh, five hours ago at the time of this recording here. Uh, definitely a very entertaining tournament. Definitely went down to the wire. A um, lot of a uh, lot of crazy matches here. So hopefully you guys can check it out. Watch it on YouTube. Watch it on Twitch. Uh, it was a really good match. It was some really good matches here. So uh, that's going to be it, fam. Thank you all so much for tuning in. It's your boy, Childish, Childish Place, checking out. Take care, and we'll see you all in the next one. I'm out.